Hey, good afternoon. Great to see everyone. At least you can see me. But uh, I look forward to uh, the opportunity to being together and seeing each of you and catching up and, and doing life together as a church. Um, real quick, just a, a, a couple of updates. Uh, we are still planning to meet together on Mother's Day. We've tried to take uh, all the precautions that we can as far as uh, separating some of the seating and, and allowing for a little bit more room, uh, sanitizing available, all the kind of things. If, if you feel more comfortable uh, wearing a mask, um, that is certainly fine. Um, we want you to feel comfortable to come and, and not feel like you're being exposed or in danger or anything like that. And so uh, we're looking forward to Mother's Day. We're going to plan to meet at 930. And we will not be doing Sunday school. But if you'd like to come early, you will have uh, milk and juice and donuts and a time of fellowship. Uh, if you just like to, uh, to share together and, and uh, kind of catch up, that would be great. 1030 will be our worship service. Uh, our children will um, be having their uh, junior church together with, with Jackie. And uh, so uh, I know she's looking forward to uh, catching up with the kids and seeing them in person and, and uh, looking forward to that. Also, just to highlight that uh, the ladies will be getting together on Saturday, May the 9th uh, with a Zoom breakfast. Uh, not sure how all that's going to work, but Becca Schaefer is going to be the special speaker for that. So uh, you can plug in to the, the normal Zoom location uh, address and uh, catch that. And so uh, we're going to just work really hard to make it a special day together. And uh, so I hope uh, you'll make plans to be with us and uh, join together on that, on that particular day. So. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm beginning to have COVID-19 fatigue. Every time I turn on the news, there's some report, some something about the virus, uh, something about more job closings, more people losing their jobs, uh, more government regulations, more money being spent. Are you, are you getting tired? Are you? Are you literally just like, ah, I don't want to hear anymore. It's just like, I, I, I've taken all I can take. Now, now, maybe it's because we've been quarantined and, and we're not able to keep our regular routine of our lives, of going to work and going to the grocery store and shopping and buying plants. All those kind of things have been taken away from us. And, and yet all we hear over and over and over is how many more people uh, have died? How many more people got sick? How many more people? We never hear about how many people got well. It's, it's, it's a horrible disease, it's, it's, and it certainly is serious. But we never hear that 99.9% .9 of the people who get the, the, the virus do well. Okay, that's, that's pretty fantastic. I mean, if you were to go to your doctor and your doctor said, I, I'm so sorry, you have cancer. However, the type of cancer you have is, is the best kind to have. In fact, 99.9% .9 of all the people who get this kind of cancer, they, they're cured. They, they live normal lives and, and they do great. And you would probably say, oh, whew, that's great. I am, that is such good news. Thank you, doctor. Well, if we hear over and over, now going into almost our second month of quarantine and they're talking about shutting everything down for the rest of the year. Oh, come on. I don't know. Anyway, that's not what I want to talk to you about. But I do want to share with you along the same lines that oftentimes when you hear something over and over and over, you know how it is. Uh, guys, your, your wife said, hey, when are you going to fix the leaky faucet in the kitchen? Oh, I, 
I will get to it. When are you going to fix the leaking part? When are you going to, you know, it's kind of like you tune it out. And, and you think, oh, I'll get to it someday. I will fix it. I will, it'll, I will take care of it. Until you realize, oh no, <laughs> I forgot to fix the leaky faucet. In Proverbs chapter 29, there's a passage of scripture that is, um, I think, just so, so appropriate. And, 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 it, and it says, whoever remains stiff necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. The premise of it is, is that when you hear something over and over and over, we have a tendency to dismiss it. We have a tendency to set it aside and, and not pay attention. It's, it's a little bit like we're in the spring of the year and, and uh, here in Marion, Indiana, uh, we have uh, tornado sirens. And uh, oftentimes between April and May and early June, it's not uncommon for the, the tornado sirens to go off. And, and the first couple of times uh, it happens, you, you kind of like wake up and, and maybe in the middle of the night, you hear the sirens going off and uh, you're thinking, oh, oh, well, is there something going on? And, and maybe you tune in to the weather forecast and uh, you see thunderstorms, and you go, oh, oh, okay, it's, it's going to rain. Uh, I got it. All right. And now, they do that over and over and over. Often when there's a severe thunderstorm, instead of a tornado, and, and I don't know about you, but I tune it out. I don't listen to it. I'm thinking, oh, okay, there they go again. They're sounding the alarm. And, and we'll probably get some rain and some lightning and thunder. Okay, we'll be fine. Maybe this verse is speaking to me and I, I need to pay attention, but I think it's human nature. It's human nature for us to often hear something over and over and over, right? Regardless of what it is, and we tend to tune it out. We tend to stop listening. We tend to harden our hearts and, and, and fail to heed the warning. In the scripture, there are so many places where the scripture warns us and, and teaches us and admonishes us about particular things. The scripture reminds us, repent, for today is the day of salvation. How many of you listening to this I've heard that, and you've heard it perhaps all your life, over and over. I know, and you think, yeah, I know, I, I need to get right with God, and I will someday. That's my intent. I'm going to do it, just like that leaky faucet. I'm going to, I'm going to get that right. But we, we go through our lives, and, and we never take the time to get right with God. And sadly, for many, they wait until the last moment, and then, Something happens and it's too late. Sometimes we might sense, and we've heard our whole life, the Lord's coming. The coming of the Lord is near, and we, we tend to put that into perspective, and we begin to realize, yeah, we've, we've heard that our whole life. We've heard that all throughout history, and, and yet here we are. But we know the day is going to come when Christ returns. We know the day's going to come when there's going to be a trumpet sound. And those who are watching and waiting and are prepared rejoice. And suddenly, millions, yea, perhaps billions of people on our planet disappear. And those who remain perhaps will remember in Sunday school or, or Bible study or, or hearing from their parents or grandparents, you need to get right because God's coming and, and they will be reminded and they will know that they have missed the coming of Christ. What a sad day. What a sad day. Oftentimes we may read the scripture and the Lord speaks to us about an issue in our lives, issue in our heart, maybe a habit that we, we know isn't good for us and, and we need to lay it down. And, and for many, it's, it's smoking. 
and, and we know of many people who uh, have, have gotten lung cancer and, and respiratory diseases, and, and yet we think, but that's not going to happen to me, and we continue in those harmful habits. I just want to remind us that God is faithful to us to speak to our hearts, to speak truth to us, to remind us all throughout our lives that there's a God to whom we will one day have to give an account. And so we need to pay attention to what he says. We need to heed the word of the Lord. We need to listen to what God says and what he speaks to us from his word and, and act on it. That Jesus reminded us, the, the man who, who hears the word of the Lord and, and acts on it and puts it into practice is like the wise man who builds his house on a rock. The rains come, the winds blow, the storms come, and that house stands firm. But then he says there's another type that Maybe a person who attends church, maybe they try to read their Bible, they, they try to, to, to figure things out, and, and it's not that they don't love God or not that they don't serve God, but, but they never really get into the practice of, of putting God's word into practice in their life. We read it, we hear it, but we don't act on it. And Jesus says that type of person is it's like the man who builds his house on the sand. He uses good materials. He's a good craftsman. He, he's a good builder. But when the rains come and the storms come and the winds blow, it says how great will be the destruction of that house. That's the person who doesn't hear the word of the Lord. So, so what am I trying to say this afternoon? Dear ones, may we hear God speaking to us. And God speaks to us all the time, if we're listening. He speaks mainly through his word. As we read God's word, as, as his Holy Spirit speaks to us from the truth of God's word, we listen. Maybe it's that still small voice in the middle of the night that, that awakens you, that speaks to your heart and says, you need to do this. You need to take care of that. You need to, to go make this right. You need to ask forgiveness. You need whatever it is. It's not the devil telling you to go and make things right. It's not the devil telling you to do the good things, but it's the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that whispers to us and shows us what we ought to do. Maybe it's a sermon. Maybe it's a little video like this. I don't know who hears it, if anybody. But listening and allowing God to speak to us, isn't that the most important thing? Proverbs is true. Whoever, whoever remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed. The Holy Spirit is so good at not speaking to us, isn't he? The Holy Spirit whispers to our heart. I like what C.S. Lewis said that God speaks to us in, in our joys, but shouts to us in our pain. God's not beyond allowing the circumstances of life to become difficult so that we can hear him speak to us. May we hear and heed the word of God. May we act in obedience to what God tells us to do. So Father, thank you. Your words are true, regardless of what men may say, regardless of, of who may believe them, your word is true. Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to us, Father. Thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit who shows us the way that we should go, who teaches us the right way to walk. So we give you thanks now and we praise you. Help us to be people who hear and heed your voice and your word. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I look forward to seeing you Sunday. Meet us again on Zoom, and uh, we'll have a great time as we share it together. May God bless you and give you a great week, okay? God bless you.